Howdy y'all. We got the sandblaster coming out today. We're gonna get these things cleaned up and we need to get them inside because it's supposed to rain tonight. It never rains out here. Dad's taping off the inside of these rollers. We've got a few last minute things to get caught up on. I've got tobacco running over here. We're gonna stretch out those chains a little better in a minute here. And as soon as Dad's done here, we'll get these back outside. And we need to put bolts in the track frames over there in all the thread holes. So the stuff they're using, it's just a, a glass, kind of a tiny crushed glass bead. And I've been using the slag here. This stuff is way less dusty than what we're using. Got the chains done, and that sandblast has actually freed these up, surprisingly, a little bit better. This one here is still very, very tight. So I think we're going to put blocks under them and take a hammer and work them inside the shop here. Those were kind of the tough ones to get because of the way we had to put them on saw horses, but I think we got a system going now. We're going to take a pallet or some of the lighter stuff, put it on the wood saw horses and the heavier stuff on those big steel saw horses so that he can work at a, at a nice higher level instead of having to bend over all day like poor dad and I have been doing for the last few days on those track pads, but this is going pretty well so far. It's doing a really nice job. They do a, a, a water dustless sandblasting, which dad and I are gonna consider for maybe 5T in the distant future. Right now, after all this work, I don't think we wanna think about any other projects for a while. This will be the end of our sandblasting for at least a year, I think. Yeah, probably so. But you never know. Working on some sheet metal out there. He's got about three quarters of the track pads, one side of them done. And uh, Dad and I are just talking. This is really saving us a lot of work. Hours and hours and hours and hours of wire brushes and my little sandblaster. And yeah, we're, this is going to give us a fast forward on the project for sure. And it's a much better job than we could do with wire brushes and our little stuff. Oh yeah, uh, Jeff definitely knows what he's doing. Couple more track guards, we're moving along. And these are the, the glass beads that you're using. Yes, it's cut glass, 47. Okay. So you, you use any of the slag or is that just what us... So Amateurs use, use, yeah. And then Dad was talking to him, and this is a uh, 185 compressor on here. Dad and I are trying to keep up with Jeff outside and move things for him and get him staged and ready for him. don't think that's doing my chain any good. In fact, I think I nicked it a little bit. So dad's gonna heat it with the torch and we'll see if that changes anything. It did go a little bit, but I think we're gonna have a lot of work ahead of us trying to get all these loose. Another thought here is to put these stuck links up on a block like that and then I'll run it over with the backhoe because that thing's about 18,000 pounds roughly. Yeah. So I don't know, that's a thought too.
Well, that didn't really budge it at all. This thing's off the ground on this side, so yeah, I got I got it. Uh, all the weight of the back of this backhoe is on it, and it's not moving it. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave this for now, and maybe it'll break loose. I, I know that the chain will bend the other way. We, we know that it just. It won't bend the opposite direction. We're trying to do that to free it up. Flip them over. I see we forgot to protect these threads. Yeah, that's my we'll, fault. We'll face them. I think they're fine. Hopefully my helicoil is okay. Up. Oh no, that's a new nut. We're fine. Our problem's from there to about right there. Middle's got one right there that's a problem. And then it's just these last like three or four links right here. Still off the ground, so it hasn't budged. It ain't going to. No. Ugh. Well, as long as it bends the other way. It does. It does. But, because this is on the outside. But like this other chain, it, it bends up fine. This direction. Well, most of it. See, they should be loose. And, it, and it, it rolls in that boss on the outside of this link here. This chain over here is a problem. I wouldn't say that this was parked in a real wet area or anything that we know of at least you know what i heated it i need the heat on the inside you got the heat in the wrong place well yeah. let me move the backhoe and we'll try it again i guess I think we're a little bewildered why this isn't breaking loose. That's a lot of weight and pressure. Maybe we just need our old loader back. Maybe a dump truck with a load of dirt on it. I think it's about lunch break. And we've been blowing everything off with the compressed air before we bring it in here. Except for the chains, we kind of forgot to do them, but I have a feeling we're gonna be taking those chains out and throwing them around like a rag doll with the backhoe. The hood's done, the firewall. These are all looking really, really good. We got a bunch of the guards sitting back here. So we're ready to put some primer on things, but we are very concerned about this track chain. Now it does bend the other way. And our biggest concern is, I, I know we could put it on, run it. It'll wear in, it'll probably wear out quicker. We're not gonna run this thing 10 hours a day, every day. It'll, it'll be lucky if it sees 20 hours a year. So, as long as these don't hump up and hit our fender and take things out, and they might, we're worried about that with those newer grousers we got, then we'll be happy, but we're not happy enough to put any paint on these yet. Fuel tank looks really good. We're happy with that. I thought what we were doing was hard work, but that sandblasting, that's hard work. And uh, it's looking very good. Got more of those done. And outside in the front, we got a whole pallet full of rollers that are ready to come in and all the grousers are done too. Looking good. Yeah. We're doing a little bit of crane rigging here. And I got the big spreader bar over here in the middle. And we've got the track frame over here and there's actually a hole big enough I can put a clevis through on the top of the frame here. So we're going to hang one side on that side and the other side on that side. That's good, that's good, set it down. Alright, let's go get, can you say get out there? Yep, we're good. Well, we just bagged us a four-point caterpillar. We got her all drawn and quartered up here on the hoist. And this is how we were able to find our old lefty's signature. 
came out of the frame, well, goat heads, ow, ow, and flaxseed. If you use flaxseed as bait, D4s out here, they just can't resist it. There's a few body parts left and we have the front idlers, they're done. They gotta come in here. But we're getting close to finished. Well, sometimes it looks like sandblasting shows us things that we didn't see before. And on this track frame, and this would be the right side of lefty, there's a weld repair here. And you can see how this is kind of bent down right here. And this is behind the, the big tensioning spring mounting here. There's a lot of dirt accumulated in here and it rusted pretty bad. So you couldn't see it very well. And you can see that this is not the best weld. That is definitely not a factory cat weld. On the other side of the frame is where it tells the tail. And you can see where it looks like they cut this with an angle grinder or grinder of some sort and welded it back in. And over here for comparison on this one, it's not been broken, so no issues here. While we have this cleaned up and up here on the hoist, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and run a, another weld bead around here just to strengthen this up so we don't have any issues in the future. I wouldn't foresee any, but why temp fate? Why buy problems when we get enough for free? And there's the side panels, the seat, one of the fenders, and they look really, really good. This saved Dad and I so much work, and I don't think we're gonna be any too soon because I see rain clouds on the horizon, so. We'll blow these off with compressed air, get them cleaned up, and we'll get them inside, probably paint them in the next couple of days. At least get a coat of primer on them. Track guards, they look good. Toolboxes, the other fender, and the front idlers. Those would have been a problem to get clean. Really cool unit. And no, this is not a paid endorsement, but I do recommend them heavily, especially if you're in the metro area, northern metro area, near Brighton. Check them out. Blastmasters, ask for Jeff. We literally just got everything picked up and put inside. And yeah, it's starting to rain. The timing was perfect today. That thing was handy today. I happened to get a pallet jack the other day for 40 bucks at an auction. It works perfect. That's gonna be handy. We got everything sandblasted and inside we are ready for a coat of primer. We were due one of those days that everything went smooth and today everything went smooth. We're very happy with Blastmasters and the, the job that they did on all these parts. And yeah, there's parts that, you know, they missed areas. And that's not because he didn't want to do it, it's because we told him not to. That he didn't need to waste time with it. And everything looks fantastic. While he was here, we even had him take a look at 5T, so he might be here in the future. And they do offer a water dustless uh, blasting, which might be our better option for 5T. Yeah, it'll still get into everything, but you won't have that grit in a lot of the components too. So well, we have time to think about that. A lot of time before we get that far with 5t but i do want to thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one well what do you think that this d4 registers on the boone and crockett